In May 2002, President Obasanjo recovered $1.2 billion from the loot of late military dictator General Sonny Abacha. In November 2003, $149 million uh, looted was also recovered from Jesse Island. In September 2005, $458 million was recovered, plus $2 billion in assets. In 2007, the Nigerian finance minister at that time, uh, Nemadi Usman, confirmed the recovery of $2.5 million. In 2014, Okonjiwala confirmed the return of $500 million. In June 2014 also, another $480 million. In 2016, Switzerland confirmed returning $723 million. So far, to the Nigerian government, all proceeds from the General Sonny Abacha loot which, as believed by many Nigerians, have been relooted. A couple of other presidents succeeded General Sani Abacha before now, most of whom are still alive. But it does appear that um, no, corrupt, no corruption-related allegation has been associated with them. Uh, for now, maybe for now, if I may add, as um, they are still alive, shall we? They are still living. Corruption has, over the years, become so synonymous with public office. And today, corruption remains among the major challenges of both developed and developing countries across the world. Corruption is a phenomenon that has a damaging impact on every aspect of the social and economic performance of a country. It leads to inefficient allocation of public funds, um, significantly lowers the quality of public sector services, and deprives people of access to basic public services. When citizens deal with public officials in Nigeria, bribery is significantly more likely to occur. And that is the reason that at the mention of corruption, all eyes looks at the direction of public office holders. Transparency International in their Corruption Perception Index recently ranked Nigeria as number 146 out of 180 corrupt countries across the world. We try, at least uh, we try. In Nigeria, corruption is viewed from the prism of private seizure of other state resources by few affluent individuals controlling various um, seats of power. I want to ask, what if corruption is defined as anything that inflicts pain on your colleague, your neighbor, your society, your organization, or your country? Will that ring a slightly different bell of clarity? Okay, what other word best described you who play your way into position and you and I know that you are not qualified for? Or you that um, demand extra money for a job you are paid salary for? What about individuals and businesses who pay their way out of the authority after being caught with substandard products meant to be sold to innocent, unsuspecting masses. It does, appear after all, it does appear after all that corruption is corruption only when it does not favor you. Because to the man who bags huge stack of um, hard currency, it is either blessing from God or simply good business. Anyway, it is my hope sometimes that um, the stone thrown in the market hit the mother of the thrower, just to pass one simple message across to the other side. In recent years, 
youth-led protest movements have erupted around the world, demanding honest governance and seeking to change the age-old narrative. And it is my hope that Africa's most populous country is not just watching from the sideline and remaining an icon of corruption. It is important for youth to open the doors that lead to the storehouse of all palliatives of good governance for a greater good of all Nigerians. And in conclusion, not just the government. Majority of the masses are corrupt. Most Nigerians don't really hate corruption. They only hate the fact that they do not benefit from it. And true. Very true, sir. Spot line. This one even hits home. Uh, be, if you, the day you benefit from corruption, you go for thanksgiving. Yes. Yes. Um, it is when you don't benefit from it, uh, you begin to complain. That's that you why. throw the stones. Yes. Uh -oh. And that's why I don't, I've never really seen anybody who is given, um, you know, opportunities and they know that this opportunity, there are um, inherent, what you call, uh, talido minds mm -hmm. <laughs> that will um, test you and you know you compromise they would go for Thanksgiving first. Somebody rigs election, and then he's, you know, fraudulently sworn in. He goes for Thanksgiving. The rest of us will join, your excellency. Yeah. But the so, day he's removed, we say he was corrupt. So what you is saying, really, is that Nigerians themselves yeah. are corrupt. Yes, the day we will don't want it, it will stop. True. Don't the leaders come from, from us? They are not Ghanaians or Togolese. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they are Nigerians. A, 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 a boss of mine was called to MC an event. And then they told him, he told them, OK, my fee is 6 million, um, including my flight and um, hotel. And then they said, ah, no, bros, no money now. No, we'll pay you 3 million. He, he ignored them. And later, someone else now called him and said, bros, now me, now, now our office, now we didn't in charge. Eh? Bros, I beg, just take the thing like that, I beg. Just take him. He said, okay, you guys will take care of my flight and all this stuff. Because I wanted to use one million to take care of my flight, my accommodation and all. They said, no. Uh, just, because he insisted they should pay him five million. They refused. Now, after the event, they gave him his check. They actually gave him a check of six million. And asked him to return three and million. And told him to return three million. He refunded one million. Because he told them that, I don't tell you now before, my fee originally now, five million. The one million were on top. I won't use them to take transport and logistics. And then the guys were actually angry. Yes, no. Yes. Why would you be angry? Of ah. course, because they needed it is they normal. needed their kickback. You're yes. talking about government. <laughs> that, this this one, one is not even government, this is private. See, ch church. The thing. Church is a church buying land. A church buying a land. And then the pastors negotiating. And then they come, they mark up. They will say, uh, they will negotiate you down, and then they mark up their ass. And then there was one, the transaction was almost selling through, but because of the agree, they refused to include some other persons. And then? Uh, Chuka, <laughs> how is it in London? Is it the same with the way we are feeling it here, even though you are not on a corruption perception in this? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not the same. Oh. They, are, they have a bit more sanity here, you know. I was just, um, I'm, I'm not sure it is that all Nigerians are corrupt on to, and that it manifests when they're given the chance. Because I think I've had more than enough chances to be corrupt, and I'm still not as I speak. Uh, I've had every opportunity. Some have been actually laid right by me, and I have, you know, I've moved past them. I'll be a much richer man today if I was corrupt. Much, oh, you are rich. Much, I wouldn't even say I'll be a much richer man. <laughs> I was going to say that I would be very, very rich. No, I'm not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I think that um, the, the temptation is there when you join a gang of thieves. That's really what it is. A lot of us are not really corrupt or don't want to be. That's but true. you get into the wrong... It's like getting into the wrong crowd. The moment you're accepted where this thing is going on, you don't realize when you're forced to start behaving like them. So, um, yeah. Sometimes it's the society that changes right. you. Thank you so much, Chuka. Influences you. Thank you, Chuka. All right, we'll, we'll just go on a quick break. Um, then when we return, Treasure takes us on the journalism and its um, practitioners. Um, join us again.